They're ruining it. They're ruining it. I don't know what to do. I understand. There's something I need to tell you. What? What is it? You're ruining it. Instead of taking command like an adult, you're sitting in here crying like a baby! Are you a baby? I try to approach everything, and especially the villains, with like the utmost love and respect. And he was the easiest for me to wrap my head around because he had Peter Pan syndrome, which I actually think I have in real life, too. He needs to avenge the death of his dad. And so he's back there as a kid trying to make marionettes. And instead of making marionettes with paper mache, he's making them with human beings, which is definitely one of the odder unsubs we've had. I mean this is an absolute compliment, but the script was so crazy that I knew that if I didn't get the best actor to play that part, it would just become laughable. It's a strange thing, and I'm, I'm very proud of us for pulling it off, but if it weren't Brad, I honestly can't even fathom it, because it would become laughable. And that's like my favorite thing as a director are things that ride the line of, it could be really terrible or really stupendous, and Brad made it absolutely stupendous. Matthew called me and left everything pretty open, but um, also very subtly <laughs> made it clear that he really thought this guy was an innocent. <laughs> My first impulse was to take off running because he does such horrendous things to people, things that are pretty unforgivable. And I wondered, you know, could I make this work? But then I thought maybe it's possible for somebody to be, get so involved and be so disconnected from the consequences of what they were doing that they, they don't get it. <laughs> they don't get it that it hurts. They don't get that death means death. <laughs> People, it's going to be a full house. So. I keep a black notebook, and I'm not even kidding, it sounds like I'm joking when I say that, but I literally have a black notebook of awesome actors that I want to work with when I'm directing things, and he had always been top of the list. For whatever reason, like, the people that play the strangest characters on screen are always the nicest people in real life, so I always was like, I have to work with him someday, and the minute I read this script, I was like, it's gotta be, it's gotta be Brad. Ever since One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, he's been, not that I was alive when that came out, I make it sound like I was there at the theater when I was, I saw One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in 77, and I was like, that's the guy for the part. There's a point where there's no point in having any kind of intellectual kind of concept about psychology at all. It's, it's you know, about me finding my own innocence and using it and trusting that the story and the director and everything will, you know, finally come together, that it all, will all make sense. I mean, it's, it's, it's about, you know, making a leap of faith, you know, and just, you know, and saying, okay, this is who he is, this is who I am, and let's go. After they saved my father from the rover. Everything that he brings to the character has like added a different layer. And after you've done a show for eight seasons, it's hard to actually feel like something's fresh and new. And I really feel like people brought their A game to this from set design, from wardrobe, from props to makeup to hair, special effects and stunts, and the actors because. When he came to the table read, people just saw it and they said, oh, this is going to be special. In reading the script, I knew that we had to actually uh, puppeteer live people. And we were fortunate enough to be able to double the actors with contortionists. So in building the rig, we had to have tension on all the lines. We created a two to one counterweight system so that when their arms and limbs are down, if they just ease their muscles up, the weights take them down. So we're actually working against how a real marionette system works. They're able to use their own strength and their own style to create all the movement. And at that point, it's all theirs, and then we just create the lateral movements across the stage and the up and down across the stage. So all those elements came together and just worked great.
I'm proud of that dance scene. It had to be absolutely breathtaking, but also horrifying. And Bonnie just really did an incredible job. She's a contortionist who does a weird thing in LA with her sister. They're called the Morgan Sisters, and they just do this strange thing of her getting tumbled into a box and thrown around by her dad, who's an old vaudeville guy. But she had a lot of stuff to kind of draw on, and then Brad had to basically be a kid playing with a toy for the first time, and him finding the beauty in his toy. I wanted the audience to get lost in the moment and not realize how terrible it was until the very end, and I think it worked. This thing's probably one of the spookiest, weirdest, and most beautiful things I have ever seen. It was extraordinary. I wasn't expecting anything like it. I was involved with it, but I didn't even really, there was a part of me going, wow the whole time. He was very sincere and very genuine in wanting to just put on a beautiful show for who he thought were his most esteemed friends. And the fact that they happen to be buckets with mop heads and giant teddy bears doesn't mean anything to him. And in a weird way, it also has a happy ending to me because he goes out, you know, smiling and thankful and he's, he's come to terms with the fact that his dad has died. He finally is able to mature, but he goes to jail knowing that he put on the best show imaginable for his friends. And so to me, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's that ambiguously happy ending that I, I always hopefully strive to tell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.